Hey everybody, it's Drake here. Now I apologize for the lack of content recently, but I've been riding a fine line of getting banned by YouTube, and I was scared to upload anything out of fear of getting that arbitrary third strike. But for the time being, my channel is in good standing, and in fact the International Day of Lights coming up, and I kind of let that day pass without me uploading anything. So today I have a pretty cool experiment for you guys, and I hope you enjoy this video. The International Day of Light celebrates the awesome power of light and how much it changes our daily lives. Now it's on the 16th of May because this is the anniversary of the first ever laser being fired. Now what better way could there be to celebrate the International Day of Light than with some huge frickin' laser beams? As you may already know, every color that you see generated on your phone screens and computer monitors is made up of some combination of red, green, and blue light. Now this is really easy to see if you use a lens to magnify some pixels on a computer screen. Now naturally, if you can do this effect with LEDs and light bulbs, it'll be much better if you use lasers. So today I'm going to build a couple white lasers for you to enjoy. For my RGB laser, I bought some red, green, and blue laser diodes and mounted them in heat sinks. Now instead of picking some super strong laser diodes, I pick laser diodes that operate in single spatial mode. And this gives them a really clean output, and in the end will make a really nice beam when it comes to combining them. Now I want to point out that when I started this laser hobby, blue and green laser diodes were not available yet. In fact, they're a fairly recent breakthrough, and they're going to revolutionize displays in the coming years. So kudos to the scientists and engineers that developed them. In order to balance the colors, I needed to be able to adjust the output power of each of the red, green, and blue lasers. So I built a driver based on, you guessed it, the LM317. Now here the LM317 regulates the current going into the laser diode, and then a potentiometer allows me to adjust the current for variable output. For a power supply, I just used a 12 volt charger that I got at a thrift shop. I just cut off the ends there and then used it to power up the circuit. From there, I carefully mounted everything inside of a project box, added a tiny pinch of magic, and then closed the whole thing up. Alright, it's time to give this circuit a test. Oh good, it powers on. Right there you can see the output of the laser sitting just below threshold. Now let's see if those potentiometers work. Okay, that one works. Sweet. Alrighty, so that circuit works as intended. It's simple, but it gets the job done. Now earlier I told you guys that I chose quality over quantity here. In exchange for a good beam, I took a little bit of a hit in the uh, power output. But these things are definitely not weak. And sure, it's no laser bazooka, but definitely falls inside that uh, retina frying category. It has a total combined output of about 400 milliwatts. I wanted to test out that color mixing, so I started by pointing all the lasers at the same spot. And then I adjusted the output powers of the red, green, and blue lasers to get the right color balance. And as you can tell, I did get it to look white, but it's only going to look white at this spot. Anything before or after this point, you're going to see the separate red, green, and blue lasers. So I actually need to combine these laser beams if I want the beam to look uniform. And I could do this with the prism, but it would actually be a lot easier if I use the voodoo magic of dichroic mirrors. Dichroic mirrors are special kinds of mirrors that let certain colors of light through while reflecting others, and they typically have a very sharp cutoff. And here's a dichroic mirror that lets blue light straight through but reflects green in higher wavelengths. Now here's a set of dichroic mirrors that's arranged so it can combine red, green, and blue light. Now I should also point out that this thing does work backwards. I can take light of multiple colors and shine it in on one side, then this thing will split it up into its red, green, and blue components. Now here's a single optic that can split or combine three colors of light. And it's related to dichroic mirrors. It's uh, called an X-cube. But in reality, it's really four prisms that are glued together. And these prisms have uh, coatings on the faces that make them act as dichroic mirrors. I'll be using one of these X-cubes that was ripped from an old projector in order to make my RGB white laser. Time for alignment. And this part can be tricky because I want the beams to overlap as much as possible. So I've dialed back the laser's power a bit for safety, and I added a bit of fog to bring out the beams. This makes alignment a lot easier. So after a few shims and tiny adjustments, they're nicely aligned now. The beams overlap almost perfectly. But I still have to calibrate the colors. Now I want to point out that because this driver is analog, the amount of colors that this setup can produce is actually infinite. So it's way, way better than the puny 16.8 million colors that your silly monitor can produce. And now, I should say that even though the amount of colors that this laser can produce is infinite, it still cannot produce all possible colors. And there it is, an actual white laser beam. Now, the color of the beam in the air versus the spot it produces are actually going to be slightly different due to scattering effects, but they're still pretty close to pure white light there. And now, it's really odd seeing this white beam traveling through the air when I'm so used to seeing super rich colors being produced by lasers. So it's an odd feeling, but it's a really, really cool experiment. Alright, let's do some experiments with this white laser beam. 
So for one, I can stick a prism in the beam, and it's going to split it up back into its constituent colors. And in fact, I could have used a prism in the first place to combine these colors. And now this works because the uh, glass has a higher refractive index at blue than it does at red, which means it slows down the blue light more, and then makes it uh, bend more. And uh, you can see that it splits up this uh, white light quite nicely here. This property is called dispersion, and it's really useful if you're making a prism. But when it comes to lenses, it actually becomes a big problem. When you see this effect in lenses, it's called chromatic aberration, and it's usually what's to blame when you see colorful fringes on objects and images and videos. Another nifty way to split up the white laser beam is with a diffraction grating. Now a diffraction grating works by utilizing wave interference to transmit the different colors of light at different angles. Like I said earlier, this laser can produce many different colors, not just pure white light. So to find all the possible colors, I simply plot my input colors on a chromaticity diagram, connect the dots, and then everything inside that polygon is attainable with this setup. Compare the gamut of my RGB laser with that of a typical computer screen. Now these laser inputs are nearly monochromatic, and that ends up giving it a bigger gamut. If I turn off the blue laser, then I can make every color on this line, which goes from green to yellow to red. Now the yellow color is very prominent, although it's going to be slightly less rich than the yellow produced by a true yellow laser. If I turn off the green laser, then I can make purple hues. Now I should point out that violet and purple are not the same thing. Violet is a true spectral color, but purple is actually just a mixture of blue and red. Shutting off the red gives me a range of aqua colors, but this is less impressive as these colors are quite a bit more washed out than the colors between blue and green on the spectrum. For example, here are some lasers in the vicinity of 500 nanometers. No computer screen can render these colors properly, so the only way to truly experience their colors is to actually see them in person. Now, if you just want to make a white laser beam, the RGB is not the only way to do it. In fact, lasers like a mixed gas krypton argon ion laser or a super continuum laser can produce white light all by themselves. But if you actually want to mix colors to make it, you really only need two colors to do this. Any line that goes through white and connects two spectral colors is a valid way to make white light. Now there are a lot of options here, but conveniently I had 589 nanometer yellow and 488 nanometer cyan lasers on hand. I found a dichroic mirror inside of a projector that was able to reflect the yellow light but transmit the uh, aqua colored light. So I used this optic to combine the beams. Now unfortunately the beam diameter on that yellow laser is much much thinner than that on the cyan laser. So that means once you go to combine the beams, you can actually see that little yellow beam inside of the cyan colored beam. But when you actually look at the spot on the wall, it is very much white. You can't really see the difference in beam diameters there. So it's really cool seeing white light produced from just two colors. I got one more demonstration to show you guys. Now this effect is called the laser time tunnel. And it's actually a really simple effect. I made a video on it when I was in high school. And basically you take a mirror and glue it to a fan or other small motor and kick it off at a slight angle. That way when you turn it on and shine a laser through it, it maps out a cone in space. And this effect looks really cool once you have fog in the air.
Alright, so that's all I have for you today. A big thank you to all my Patreons for supporting these projects. Until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.